Hello everybody, my name is Lee Foster Wilson and I'm an artist and illustrator from Cornwall in the UK. Welcome to the August edition of my studio vlog. I hope the summer has treated you well. I can't quite believe that um, autumn is nigh on upon us already. Feels like it's come around really quickly and I think especially because of the heat we've had this summer, um, all the trees seem to be dropping their leaves a little bit earlier than normal so it just makes it feel like it's quite autumnal out there already. I feel like I've been a bit quieter on the work front this month because my children have been off school for the summer holidays. Um, my husband and I tend to split the days down the middle when they're off school, um, which means that one of us will work the morning and one of us will work the afternoon or vice versa. And then we get the rest of the day to hang out with them and enjoy the summer. I did plan out my summer, which you will see, and actually it worked out quite well. I managed to not just get the essentials done, which can happen, um, but I managed to schedule in plenty of drawing time and I will talk through some of that um, in this video. Um, yeah, generally it's been a really nice summer and a really lovely balance of uh, work and play which is what summer should be about really. Maybe life in general should be about that as well. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoy this little meander through my art month. Um, yeah, sit back and have it on the background while you're doing something else or, you know. Anyway, who am I to tell you how to watch your YouTube videos? I hope you enjoy it. second of August um, trying to plan the month ahead because it's summer holidays and uh, that can mean that um, we don't get much time to do much work <laughs> so um, I'm planning it because we're away a few times we're going camping here and then we're away at the end of the month as well um, and yeah by the time you see this I will be here I'm hoping if all goes to plan so um, I've highlighted all the family things in green that I know that we're doing right now. Um, and I'm sure I'll be adding to that as the summer goes on a bit. But I do have some things I really want to get done this month. Obviously, there's the blog and uh, the new vlog um, and the newsletter ready to set that live here before we go away. And that will be automated to send on the 31st um, today. If you're watching this on the day it goes live i hope anyway um or maybe you watched it here i don't know i'm not sure how this is going to work yet because <laughs> i'm only here i've got all this to go but as you can see i try not to work weekends because um that's just part of my routine now um and it's something mark and i do we don't work weekends because uh, we like to spend that as a family um, and the kids have swimming lessons and we like to see friends and there's usually quite a lot on anyway so I'm trying not to cram work in there as well um, but that actually only leaves me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 days in the whole of the month or 16 and a half days we're hoping to be back from camping at lunchtime so we can both get a couple of hours work in on the afternoon of the 9th so 16 and a half days to get all the things done. And I'm trying to plan it out because I don't want the month to rumble by and me not actually having had time to sit down and make some work. So I've scheduled in some drawing for Friday and um, I will see how next week plan pans out and I will schedule in the drawing as we go because honestly, I can't really see past here. My children have just got back from the park. Um, I'll finish this bit later. Ha, so part two. Um, yeah, they've been at the park today um, with my husband and on Thursday, which is where this green one is all uh, blocked out, I'm having a full day with them, which would be really lovely. Um, so yeah, they are, they've been home and now they're off again because my daughter has gone to um, a birthday party. Um, anyway. So where was I? 
I was saying I've got 16 and a half days to work and I want to schedule in a drawing. But yes, I can't really see past here at the moment because things crop up, people visit. Um, and yeah, I don't want to schedule in too much and then be disappointed if I can't fit the drawing in because other work's come up, um, that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, I'm hoping to get some drawing in next week too. Um, but there's always piles of admin to sort out as well. So we will see how that goes. Anyway, let's um, hope that by the end of the month, I will have done lots and lots of drawing and have loads to show you for this vlog. Otherwise, it's just going to be me videoing my plan for the month. Um, yeah, maybe I will do little check-ins with this as the month goes along and let's see how I'm getting on with it. Okay, enjoy the vlog. Oh no! My drawing for the month started with working out the next bird I'm going to be adding to my flock and I decided to do the sparrow this time. As you can see I was not happy with my first attempt which is the bottom one but I quite like this other one, the top one. Um, I decided to put the sparrows in ivy because um, while we have sparrows nesting in the eaves of our house my mum and dad's house has ivy on the front and it's like a sparrow city in there. You always see them flitting in and out, going to visit each other's nests and yeah, it's just lovely to see them. There's so many little homes in there. I painted the bodies of the leaves with Liquitex ink because I really like how it sits on the background and has a kind of watercolour effect which brings a bit of um, depth and movement to the leaves themselves. And the veining is done with this lovely dark green Posca. You may have spotted that I'd already started to put in some larger abstract shapes on the sides of the sparrows and I decided to carry that on across the double page spread. I wasn't really sure what I was doing but I decided to riff on the lovely minty yellowy colour in the background of the sparrows and see if I could make the colour combination work. I've spoken before about the stream of consciousness drawing I like to sometimes do and this was a lot like that. I had the parameters of the ideas behind my more abstract work guiding me, so those ideas of looking deep at the powerfulness of the smaller things in the world, as light, texture, shape and all sorts of other things, but primarily I was aiming to make it work as a composition. I think having worked digitally for a while now I still have a little bit of a fear where the unerasable is concerned and I've been working on bits and pieces like this to make myself push through because as we, we might you might know nearly every artwork goes through a stage where it just looks like frankly just a bit shite and I think that is half the skill is being able to pull it back from that edge so when I make these sketchbook pages I, pages, I feel like that's what I'm practicing being able to have the confidence to try stuff and if it doesn't work also giving myself the confidence to know that I can walk it back around to somewhere half decent if not actually good. I really enjoy getting lost in these pages and also trying new things um, and I brought out that lovely green ink again and really enjoyed making these kind of wavering lines of the brush. Painting with the ink is a bit of a trial at the moment um, because I'd like to move off the smaller paper to canvases but I know that my current materials won't work the same on the canvas surface so I'm trying to build up the confidence with other materials uh, like mainly using a brush again um, a little at a time so when the time comes I'll be able to use them effectively and it's all trial and error at the moment but I know that when I'm ready I'll likely dive in for each verse which tends to be how I do things like hover around the edge for yunks and then before I know it, I'll be right in there no idea what I'm doing, but hopefully loving it. Layering colours and materials is always a bit of an experiment, but I like seeing what works to give a shadow effect, and it's not always what you might think, like with the uh, fluorescent pink crayon over the pen at the bottom there. Um, but I really like the fluorescent there, so I decided to really go for it again with my uh, fluorescent pink Liquitex paint marker, which is one of my favourite pens. It's got this amazing quality of being kind of translucent, but really bright at the same time. I think it worked out okay compositionally in the end um, but there is this little bit on the bottom right that ended up a bit muddy and I tried to add some yellow to sort of lift it a little bit but I'm not sure really how successful that was um, and the middle of the big flower 
uh, feels a bit unfinished but I was just enjoying the kind of delicate colours and layering so I decided not to ruin it um, and it's just a play in my sketchbook so that doesn't really matter and the nice thing about sketchbooks is you can just turn the page without too much guilt about wasted paper and start again. I felt like I needed to practice my sparrows again because the previous drawings hadn't been a full on success as you saw and I'm not feeling confident enough to go into the final piece of them yet. I'll need to get the composition down as well so I went ahead and made another background for them. I'd actually just made the previous background for them on a whim and I couldn't really remember how I'd made that lovely minty, yellowy, pale colour and what ratios of ink I needed or whether I did it with pens or ink or both so this was also a bit of an experiment. Um, I've talked before about how enjoyable these backgrounds are to make, just like smooshing paint around without thinking too hard about it. Um, but it does turn out I did remember that in the end how to make that lovely colour combination and now if I forget again at least I have a video guide to show me the way. Um, yeah, as a reminder it's good to record stuff sometimes. <laughs> So last month I showed you um, the new pieces I have out with Shruti at the moment, including these bowls and this um, thermos and this height chart. Um, these ones are from the original drop. Um, but I also have some other bits to show you too, like this money box. When Shruti suggested we do a money box, I was so excited about it. Both my children have got um, ceramic money boxes which they use to keep their pocket money in and they love taking the stopper out the bottom and counting all their pennies. So when they said about us doing a money box, I just was so happy that there might be this money box with my art on it out in the world for other people's children to use. Um, so yeah, this is it. We have the world is full of magical things and all around are lots of little magical things. Do you like my little, I don't even know what this is, nodding away down here. Um, but we have just a suggestion of what it is around the bottom with the coins nestled in the undergrowth. This little ladybird. Of course a bird flying above a lovely magical landscape and on top it around a bit. It's a bit more lifelike like that. We have a little butterfly and a kite dancing among some petals blowing around in the wind and the stars. So that's that one which I'm just delighted with. I don't know if you may have seen on my Instagram I made a um, stop motion of it dancing around. In fact I'll probably put it in my shorts um, on my YouTube feed so that you can all see it. And if we come across here, this is another of the newbies. This lovely vase. The bottom pattern goes all the way around and on the front is this butterfly from my piece of artwork that I made a few years ago um, with the word change on it because it's all about metamorphosis and butterflies go through possibly one of the biggest changes that I know of in the natural world anyway. Um, apart from a seed into a tree, that kind of thing. But um, as a living, breathing thing, the caterpillar into the butterfly is a really good symbol for that. So Shruti picked out the butterfly and the patterns I drew to go with it and applied it to this really sweet little ooh, bottle vase. Ceramic, as you heard just then. And also some more of these little nodding head friends, we call them. There we go. Um, these two vases too. There's this one with this You Are Loved artwork on it, which I made again a while ago. It's just printed on both sides of this lovely bottle shaped vase. Just perfect for a little posy in there. In fact, I should put some flowers in these. I've not done it yet, but they only came through a few days ago. So I've not had a chance to kind of sit with them and just digest what they're about yet. I just love having things of my art on. It's so nice, especially when you can use them around the house. Um, and this other one with my beautiful artwork on it. 
and this one Shruti took my art and made the pattern go all the way around it's so sweet and I just think it'll look lovely with some blooms spilling over the edge beautiful indeed Amongst everything else this month, I did actually find time to work on a pre-stretched paper that I'd already made a smooshy background on. And this one's about A3, so a roughly the size of a double page spread in my sketchbook. I really enjoyed these colours together and the texture that I managed to get into the work. I've kind of realised recently that I do naturally gravitate to a bit of a neater edge sometimes, but I feel like with this one, I found a nice balance of brushiness and scratchiness alongside the cleaner edges. And it kind of lifts elements from pages I worked on in my sketchbook, but in the end, I just kind of went for it without too strong a composition in mind to try and keep a sense of spontaneity in there, which I think I just about managed. I'm still trying to be braver with that, but it feels like it's getting easier and I'm really pleased with this one. In the end, the background intended for the sparrows didn't actually get used for that purpose. I was on a bit of a roll after making that larger piece and kind of in the zone, if that sort of works. So when my next chance to draw came around, the sparrows were far from my mind. As you can see, I'd made a bit of an experimental mess on the right hand side of the page, but the colour combination that you can probably just see dotted along the top there was really speaking to me and I just needed to work more with it. So I just decided to go for it again and that just happened to be on the background intended for the sparrows. Um, but again, I just went in without a plan, just with the idea that if it didn't work out, it would just be another lesson in trying to learn how to pull it back to somewhere decent. I feel like I need to approach my art a bit more like this in general really because I find that the work I make in this way is a lot less tight and it is good to have some parameters though because I say I went in with no plan for this one but I did already have the colour block background in mind and of course I had the colour combination so I guess there was an element of forward planning though the rest of it was mostly done on my wings at the moment like these dark lines which really felt a bit brave cutting across the colours like that. And you'll see later that I decided that actually they were a bit too brave. Um, but I think when I put them down, I was a little bit distracted and not really concentrating as much as I would normally have been as my little boy came to say hello and show me his colouring. And he wanted a cuddle, which is always really cute. Honestly, mid-work cuddles are the best. So once he'd sat on my knee for a bit and we'd had our lovely cuddle, I just carried on um, drawing from the printouts I've scattered around of photographs I've taken of shadows and shapes and stuff. And this one that you can see is of some streptocarpus over on the studio windowsill. I really love it when the sun comes through and the light shines through the flowers. I've been finding these sorts of little details really inspiring lately. Um, so yeah, that's where these big flowery shapes come from on this page. Um, I'll stop talking now and uh, just let you watch this come together with a jumble of sounds I was listening to as I made it. Um, but just to warn you, there is a short sped up bit in the middle which sounds kind of really weird and a bit funny, but in, I think, I don't know, in a kind of enjoyable way, I guess.
And here's the finished experiment. There's some bits that I don't like, but I do like some of what's going on here. Um, it just scratched an itch for me anyway, and I'm sure I'll come back to it and take elements from it for future work, so it's not wasted time at all. So here we are. It's now August the 29th, just here. And as you saw from the video, I did actually get quite a lot of drawing done this month, which um, feels quite good. I managed to schedule it in and stick to it. So that was really successful. Um, as you can also see, there are quite a few more green days. So I ended up having some lovely long days with my children um, where I didn't have to rush back to get to work or, um, you know, I only managed to get the essential things done. The rest of these white days I split in half with my husband. So I'd either work the morning or the afternoon and then he'd take the other end of the day and then we'd spend the rest of the time with our children. The weekends got quite busy, um, but that's always fun. And yeah, it's been a good summer. And now we're here. Um, I will be scheduling this video to go out on Thursday, hopefully, if I can do it. Or you might be seeing it here. Uh, yeah, we'll see how that works out. Um, I have dropped a few balls this month. Um, the main one being social media, but and also promoting my shops. But you know, for the precious time I have with my children while they're still young, they're seven and nine, I think that's a small price to pay. They'll be back at school next week, so um, plenty of time for all that. So there we go. I hope you've enjoyed this little wander through my August and um, the work I've been making this month. And I'd love it if you could just leave a little thumbs up at the bottom if you did like it or if you have any questions, please do drop them down in the comments below. And if you really, really like it, please do subscribe. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Until next time. See you soon.